the zoning bylaws. So we consciously and intentionally set the zoning bylaws aside uh, and proceeded to spend uh, significantly uh, more of our time on coming up with the changes that were clearly needed to bring the old bylaws of the town of Amherst into conformity with the new charter. Uh, with respect to the zoning bylaws, we perceived in the zoning bylaws as they existed before the charter change, a, a well-integrated, in, internally cross-referenced uh, uh, collection of laws that work together like parts of a great big machine. Unlike the general bylaws that were like many small machines, each needing repair, uh, that didn't <laughs> mention, one didn't mention the other. So this analogy probably gives you an insight into how we looked at it. Uh, with great trepidation about making uh, the, the number and scope of changes to it uh, without the careful attention of uh, this body, the planning board, uh, uh, to any substantial changes. So our attentions were limited basically to those uh, fundamental necessary changes uh, dictated and mandated by the Charter, uh, mainly reference to the local boards and officials, uh, that exist under the charter that did not exist under the, uh, uh, under the old form. So changing select board to town manager or to uh, town council as required, uh, those kinds of things had to be done. Uh, a few other changes uh, related to the manner in which the body is appointed, and you can see in the materials that you had previously been uh, provided the, the number of changes that we proposed were relatively few. Uh, they, uh, the, the most significant one is taking uh, uh, topics that were treated in separate parts of the zoning bylaw and aggregating them into a, a, a single location for ease of reference. Uh, the, the previous bylaw committee that worked last summer technically went out of existence uh, when the new charter uh, uh, came into effect and the council then appointed the second bylaw committee, uh, made up of five, not three people. Uh, three members of the committee are members of the council, and two are not, myself and Bernie Kubiak. Uh, Aly Alyssa Brewer, uh, Pat DeAngelis, and Evan Ross are on the committee. And we three have been meeting uh, again to fixate and focus on the general bylaws uh, but attended to the necessity of bringing the zoning bylaws to the council at the earliest opportunity. This could have been done uh, shortly after the council took, a, uh, uh, took effect the, uh, as the governing body. Uh, but the council uh, determined that it would be its, uh, its preference and its, uh, in, in its wisdom to take more time uh, to, to look at uh, the bylaws as proposed uh, before you. Um, uh, so that the action that is taken has, has been thoroughly vetted. Uh, so this body, the planning board, did actually go through this exercise once previously, but one of the provisions of Chapter 48, Section 5, is that uh, legislative action on the recommendation and the report of the planning board has to occur within 90 days, and it did not, obviously. So we're doing, this is a redo, uh, basically the same thing uh, all over again. And what it does is it presents to you a, 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 a revised copy of the zoning bylaws. Um, <clears throat> and um, the charter did make provision uh, for the bylaws of the town to continue in full force and effect until and unless changed or modified uh, by the council. Uh, if questions arose, uh, ambiguities occurred, with respect to how to enforce the old town bylaws for our new form of governance, which is a city form of government, those matters uh, would not likely happen. And if they did, the, the court would simply say, well, what is the appropriate correlative body or official to carry that out? So we have been living under that regime since the charter went into effect. But now is the time to bring ourselves up to current. So the, the, uh, the matter before you tonight is to join me in recommending something to the council. We recommended something to the council. The planning board under, under the statute has to make a, a report with recommendations to the council on the proposal to substitute this book for that book. And the new book basically has a, a small collection of changes that I just mentioned to you. The benefit of making this wholesale change is 
to substitute the, the, the fundamental core document, the new baseline document, that then sits as uh, material for future changes to the zoning bylaw. In other words, making the changes of the, uh, to the zoning bylaw that you are al always thinking about that occur regularly. Uh, we want those actions on your part and the council's part to, f to address the provisions of a revised set of zoning bylaws, not piecemeal during various stages of this transformation uh, from the old to the new. So if this goes according to the plan that has been proposed, the council will, uh, in, in July, there is a date on which the council has uh, begun the procedures of setting it up as an agenda item to basically repeal the old bylaws and uh, enact or adopt the new bylaws as the zoning bylaws in the town. One final comment, the, the committee has made a, a slate of recommendations uh, that should be an ongoing interest to you. And that is, once we have a revised set of zoning bylaws and a new set of revised general bylaws, the extent to which we could bring a little bit of uniformity into these two forms would be helpful. In the, zoning by, in the general bylaws, we proposed a whole new uh, organizational framework with a new set of alphanumerics that make it easier to read. It is entirely different than the alphanumerical or order of the zoning bylaw, which, which is in and of itself not a legal problem. It just makes it difficult to read. And uh, we have made some recommendations that, that may warrant your attention going forward. That is to bring the zoning bylaws uh, format and structure uh, into greater alignment with the format and structure that we have proposed for the general bylaws. Something to think about. We'll talk about it over the next year or two, perhaps. But as you think about revisions to the zoning bylaws, our committee has recommended that as one of the items uh, to call to your attention. So uh, substantively, uh, there is a red line strikeout track changes version of the new bylaw, the zoning bylaws, which you have had opportunity to review. Uh, and if there are any questions about any of those proposed changes, uh, uh, I'd be happy to provide whatever answers I can come up with for those. Thank you so much. And if I could just reconfirm the changes that are before us today are the exact same changes that the Planning Board endorsed in December of 2018? Yes. Thank you for that. Are there further comments, questions from the Board? So the matter before us is whether the Planning Board will recommend to the Town Council adopting the zoning changes that were described. Uh, seeing no further comment or question, I'd entertain a motion. Uh, I'll move that the uh, Planning Board re recommend these changes uh, to the Town Council. Second that. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, the next, yes. Um, I wanted to ask a question of Mr. Ritchie. If he would tell me uh, at what point the planning board needs to have its report ready for town council, if he knows that. Well, the sooner the better. Uh, Could you please use the uh, microphone? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. The sooner the better. Uh, the, the, the legal function of this is to equip the council with the legal authority to act. In the absence of a report with recommendations from you, it cannot do so. So the minute before they convene is legal. Uh, I'd suggest that you do it earlier than that, but there is no uh, specified timeline in the statute or the, or the charter. Thanks again. Okay. All right, so the next item on our agenda would be a public hearing on Planning Board Rules and Regulations. Uh, the gentleman in the audience, are you here for a particular <coughs> item? I've been away for a long time. I'm just away from here. I'm just trying to figure out how things work okay. for future So you're not associated with the presentation material here?
All right, thank you for that. So we're just gonna proceed with the agenda now. I think we'll be revisiting or visiting that presentation material a little bit later. So this next item is public hearing on planning board rules and regulations. Uh, this is PBR 1-19, continued from March 20th, 2019 and May 29th, 2019, to review, update, and amend the planning board rules and regulations to bring them into conformance with the Amherst Home Rule Charter as adopted March 27th, 2018. And so we have some material in our packets. This was discussed at two prior meetings. Um, I would, yes, Chris. I just wanted to make a correction to the agenda. We discovered after we published it that the um, meeting of the planning board was actually April 17th rather than March 20th. So that's just to know for this meeting, okay? All right, thank you for that clarification. Um, and I would add uh, for informational purposes that, so one of the issues at hand here is that there are two places in Amherst's ordinances which discuss the planning board uh, voting requirements. And what we're discussing now is the voting requirements as laid out in the planning board rules and regulations, while the other location where these appear is in the zoning bylaw. Uh, the zoning subcommittee uh, did meet this afternoon and reviewed zoning amendments, which it will be uh, bringing to the planning board for its consideration. And the zoning subcommittee did recommend that at some point the planning board recommend to the town council that the town council adopt the changes um, as described by attorney Joel Bard um, in his email, which would change the wording of the voting requirements such that the concurring vote of at least four members of the planning board is required for site plan review applications. So the zoning issue is not at hand right now. What's at hand is the planning board rules and regulations and a potential approach to this as discussed by the board is to simply reference the zoning bylaw and um, point to that for the voting requirements. And as we know, the voting requirements in the zoning bylaw currently require a two thirds vote or at least five members of the board. So having provided that update, are there other comments? Questions on this issue from board members? Michael. Yes, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to say that I appreciate the information that has been circulated in the last few days concerning uh, the voting requirements uh, statewide <clears throat> and particularly concerning the um, governor's uh, bill. Uh, which will prom which to promote uh, additional residential development and development of all kinds. And it's uh, a su uh, assumption that a majority vote will be required for almost all uh, uh, site plan reviews uh, in connection with these uh, new approaches to development. Um, I um, intend to um, uh, continue to support the notion of a, a two-thirds majority, a two-thirds uh, vote for a site plan review uh, at our level, um, largely because um, I, while I support strongly uh, a number of the um, um, initiatives that the governor's bill is proposing, particularly the uh, uh, arrangements for uh, in, infill development and uh, uh, the 40R uh, proposals. Um, I think that the bill as it's written, and I haven't read the bill, but I've read a lot of the uh, information about it, suggests to me that uh, it is overwhelmingly skewed toward the interests of developers. Uh, and I believe that it should be equally, I believe that the interests of current residents of towns, and particularly in this case of Amherst, should have more uh, authority in determining the nature of the towns that the town that we live in. Um, I am concerned that uh, since that um, what I believe to be a, a too large influence on the part of uh, the development the development community uh, is skewing the way in which the uh, laws are intended to be enforced. Uh, that seems to me to be clear from all of the material that I've been reading about, uh, reading for, prepared by the state uh, um, 
agencies uh, which has been circulated to us in the last few days. Um, so although I realize that I am in a minority on this, uh, this board, um, I intend to vote that way and I wanted to uh, uh, record my sense that uh, this is a vote more against the um, mandate from the, the, uh, the bill that is about to be uh, voted on in the state legislature, whether it get, makes it through or not, I, I, I don't know. Um, but the vote is to maintain a kind of home rule approach to this issue rather than to uh, submit to state regulation before such state regulation has actually occurred. Thanks for that. Jack? Um, Mike, I'm wondering uh, your reference to it being skewed to developers. Um, what um, where are you getting that from? Uh, because I think that the intent was that <clears throat> Massachusetts has an economy that needs to sustain. Um, if there's not development or housing, people aren't going to live in Massachusetts. Uh, there's an analogy where if Amherst can't provide housing, um, we're losing residents, potential uh, families. Um, it, it, it seems like it's a, it's, it's a partnership with developers in some sense, I think, and I'm just wondering what your thoughts are about developers. I think there's some evil connotation that you're referring to. I, I don't, I'm not sure. And if I could just cut in for just one minute here, I did review the proceedings at the last meeting, and I just want to gain a better understanding of what the options here on the table are. My understanding is that the proposal is to reference the zoning bylaw in the planning board rules and regulations as the standard for the voting requirements. So my point is that this conversation can and should happen, but this might not be the exact moment to have it unless there is someone that's proposing that we do something different with the planning board rules and regulations at this time. Because if we do want to pursue the approach that has been recommended by some on this board, some staff, that we revise the voting requirements, that needs to happen at the zoning bylaw level. And that needs to be a future conversation. As I mentioned, there was discussion at the zoning subcommittee today about that. So we could discuss that under the zoning section of our agenda. We could make it an agenda item for a future meeting. Um, is there anyone that is proposing we do something different with the planning board rules and regulations than was described? Christine? I'm proposing that we go with what legal counsel suggested and what, you know, reading through all this and just, it, it's not about following the, the rules, you know, from the governor or new bill. You know, when I read about what is a site plan review and it's by right, it's, it's not about developers and how much um, control they or we have and whether or not they can or can't build. The whole process of a site plan review is by right. And that's why the, the usual is simple majority. So I propose, and, and the following is that we still have to follow the zoning bylaw until that is changed. But by changing our rules and regs, it sets a tone to prepare for some of this um, smart growth building and changing our zoning and such so that it can be better for Amherst and we can fix some of the problem zoning. So I think we should make a change where we can make our change and send that message to the council so that they can start to think about it. And as this bill and other things and, and as you look to other towns and look to our own building, then the zoning bylaw can be changed down the road. Because even if we change our rules and regs, it, it, it doesn't enact now. It's just um, a start to something better. Chris? I think it's going to be confusing to have the planning board's rules and regulations differ from the zoning bylaw. I think you'd be better off having both of them be aligned with each other, whichever way it goes. I tend to agree with that, and I think we can set the tone for what we want to recommend in terms of the zoning bylaw when we have that discussion. I don't think we're quite there yet, but if others are you know, really wanting to explore that option, we can do that further at this time. All 
Are there further comments, discussion, or a motion? <coughs> Michael. Um, yeah, I um, respond to what Jack said a minute ago. Um, I agree that, uh, that this is a partnership, um, that the developers are an important part of building houses, um, maybe the most important part. Um, they put up the money, uh, they find the uh, constituents, and uh, they make it happen. No question about that. Um, I am concerned that, uh, that the, the, whatever development occurs have the support of a significant body of the town residents. Um, and that's where the partnership comes in. It seems to me that uh, the, um, the likelihood of large-scale town support um, is more um, uh, well, the town, the full town support is more likely if uh, a large, uh, not a super majority, but a, a two-thirds majority uh, of voting on major site plans um, is maintained. Uh, and uh, it seems to me that with the appropriate uh, wording and development of um, requirements that will be part of whatever new zoning bylaw we end up uh, approving, as long as those uh, criteria are carefully written and are appropriate to the town's interests uh, and are reasonable to, be, to follow by, for a developer, uh, that's where we want to, I believe that's where we want to end up, not just uh, uh, opening the door uh, to quote, by right, unquote, developing uh, without kind of having um, reasonable requirements which are part of the by right process. Uh, by right is not you can do anything you want to, by right is you can do what, you, what needs to be done within the context of the zoning bylaw. Uh, and that's where I think we need to be, and that's where I would hope that a two-thirds majority would get us to the point where we are all in reasonable agreement uh, with whatever we end up doing. So I still favor an approach where we resolve this immediate issue by amending the rules and regulations to say that they'll correspond when it comes to voting requirements with the zoning bylaw. Since the conversation has started about what we might do with the zoning bylaw recommendation, I would say that one of my main concerns about the current situation we're in where SPR has become more difficult than it otherwise would have been under our prior form of government because of the way that the math breaks down on the voting requirements, we want a range of tools that we use to permit uses in town. And if we have by rights, we have SPR, and we have a special permit, the nature of these changes means that the, special, the site plan review applications have um, been given a higher threshold for passing. And so our range of uses of permitting paths has diminished. And we talk about development when we're talking about site plan reviews, but I think we've largely overlooked what actual uses are regulated by site plan review in the town and what uses would be made more difficult. Um, medical offices, grocers, bakeries, delis, tailors, governmental offices, reservoirs, other governmental uses, convenience stores, philanthropic or charitable medical or residential facilities, public parks, churches. Um, these are a range of uses that I don't think we necessarily want to be making more difficult to occur in the town. And so I think that if there are certain uses that um, are deemed uh, needing more regulation, and I can say that the mixed use building category, which is currently site plan review, has been a topic of much discussion, we should have that discussion. I don't think we should have a discussion about making it difficult across the board for the uses such as the one I described. Um, so that's my line of thinking when it came to the zoning subcommittee's recommendation today, and I'll revisit and expand on it when we have that discussion. Um, are there further comments, questions, or a motion? Uh, I don't disagree with that at all. I think that's, uh, you've hit on exactly what the issue is, which is the uh, mixed use building. Uh, and those are the, that's, the, that's the concern that I think uh, will be the central issue in terms of discussion uh, relative to uh, any zoning changes we want to make, and we've got to get that right. 
I think I absolutely agree with that. I think there's many others that would like to see that section of the bylaw revised. I have grave concerns about modifying all SPR uses and how easily or not that can be achieved just because there's a concern with one category. I think we should address that one category, and that has been a priority of the zoning subcommittee. It was mentioned as a priority of some members of the CRC when the zoning subcommittee met with them recently. So I think it's a high priority for the town in general. Ari? Um, so are you suggesting that we hold on, hold off from voting on the issue right now until the zoning subcommittee has had time to deliberate further, or? I'm suggesting we resolve the planning board rules and regulations issue, which is the topic of this hearing now, yes. by amending them to say that the voting requirements shall be in keeping with the zoning bylaw. Okay. Jack? Um, I also feel like you put your finger on a particular issue. Uh, so well, well said, and uh, I agree with what you said. Michael? Uh, I, I will uh, move that uh, we resolve the issue. I, I, you're worrying about keeping the uh, um, rules and regulations referencing the zoning bylaw. Uh, I, think that's I think that's the way we should go for now, and uh, I would so move. Does that motion include adopting the changes relative to the other issue, which is the, uh, I believe it's the cost of Sorry, Chris. It's um, in reference to um, third party review of projects and um, what the appeal mechanism would be. And the town attorney suggested that the appeal mechanism should be to the town council rather than to the town manager. So those are the two matters before us. Would that motion include those changes as uh, well? I did not intend it to, but. Um It certainly could. Where is that, Chris? I think I sent you his email, and let me find it in the um, text. It's on page 11 under administrative appeals. Um, initially, when uh, we had gone through this and made suggestions about how um, the wording should change to comport with the with the charter. We had suggested that the town manager would be the um, entity that would um, decide on an appeal if, if say, an applicant did not did not like the um, the uh, third party reviewer or had a problem with the, the amount that they were charging or something like that, and they wanted to appeal it. We had suggested that it be to the town manager, and town our town attorney has. Um, said that it would be better going to the town council because they could act as a quasi-judicial body and the town manager cannot act as a quasi-judicial body. So that's as it is redlined in the on page 11 in our current. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would definitely include that. Okay, I have a motion. And a second from Pari, thank you. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? All opposed? All abstaining? All right, so that passes five to one. All right, so we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the zoning subcommittee report. Uh, the zoning subcommittee had a very productive meeting with the community resources committee of the town council a few weeks back, and then the zoning subcommittee also met earlier today. And as mentioned, the zoning subcommittee is working on three uh, zoning articles. And today it's made recommendations to the planning board on all three of them, those being the supplemental dwelling units article, the marijuana buffer zones article, and the article just discussed, which would be a revision to the voting requirements for site plan review. And the zoning subcommittee has recommended that uh, the planning board take town council's advice and recommend that wording, which is that any site plan review applications will require the concurring vote of at least four members of the planning board, that the planning board recommend that change to the town council. 
So I believe that we have only one of these articles in final form in our packets, which would be the supplemental dwelling units. Um, the planning board would need to hold a public hearing on any of these that it's going to recommend to the town council, and that's an action that we could consider taking at a future meeting. So the zoning subcommittee would look for responses, reactions, conversation from and with the planning board about these uh, three articles, which we may post public hearings for soon. Chris? I don't think that um, we put those articles in the planning board packets because I wasn't sure that they were ready, but now that you've recommended them, I would put them, put them in the next packet. Can we set a date for the public hearings prior to our receiving the packets? Chris? I think it would be best if we let the zoning bylaw go through its paces with the town council before we propose, before we hold public hearings or propose any changes to the zoning bylaw because we want to have a base level that then we can amend. So I understand and partially agree with that approach. Um, I also recognize that when we made the same action in December that we made tonight, we may have thought that that would be resolved in short order, and it um, <coughs> took a little bit longer than expected. So I think an approach could be a hybrid where the planning board makes its approach and recommendation, but perhaps with a sensitivity to the timeline of the town council as to when we actually deliver and, and ask for any sort of action from them. I would hesitate to wait to have this discussion amongst ourselves until the changes that we discussed earlier, the adoption of the new bylaw goes into effect. Chris? So with that in mind, um, you could hold the public hearing in July. There's a July 3rd date and a July 17th date. Or you could hold the public hearing in August. There's a, an August 7th date. So do you have a preference about either of those? Well, we have a larger quorum available on the, on the July 17th than we do on uh, August 7th, so maybe uh, July 17th would be a better choice. Shall I not notice the public hearings for July 17th? Yes, I'd say so. All right, any further discussion of the zoning subcommittee report? Any public comments on the zoning subcommittee report? Any other planning and zoning issues? All right, moving on to item six, old business topics not reasonably anticipated. Are there any such items? I don't believe so. Uh, item seven, new business. 7A, signing of letters to registry of deeds and land court recorder regarding signatures of planning board officers. Chris? So this is something I've been meaning to do for a long time and it came to a head last time uh, when Ms. Gray Mullen um, signed uh, ANRs and it really jolted me into um, thinking that we better get these letters signed. So the idea is that you um, authorize the, um, the officers of your board and currently the officers are Mr. Stutzman is the um, chair, Ms. Gray Mullen is the vice chair, and Mr. Jemsik is the clerk. You authorize them to sign any documents related to subdivision. And um, these letters go to the Registry of Deeds and to the Land Court. And obviously if your officers change, we'll need to do this again, but we really should have done this probably six months ago and I apologize for not taking care of it earlier. And so those letters are here this evening? So I'll pass those letters along for your signatures. And again, there are two of them. All right, thank you. Are there any uh, new business topics not reasonably anticipated? Would this be a good opportunity for me to report on the meeting last night? Yes, please. Okay. So last night we had a very lively meeting. Um, it was uh, attended by probably about 45 people. 
was very good. It was at the Woodbury Room of the Library, and the topic was um, Chapter 40R, which is uh, commonly known as the Smart Growth um, uh, Program. And um, what the Smart Growth Program is, is it allows uh, a city or town to develop an overlay zoning district that um, allows denser development um, in exchange for providing either 20% or 25% affordable units. So in some ways it mimics a 40B project, which goes before uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, but in the 40R case, um, the town actually has a lot more control over what happens. In the 40B case, the developer comes in with a proposal and the town reacts to it, whereas in the case of a 40R, um, the town decides what it wants to have, where it wants to have it, and it can set up design guidelines to, um, to control what is built. It can also, if you want to use the phrase form-based code, that can be used as well. Um, and you determine how many units you want to allow per acre or per whatever size of your district is, um, and then uh, give parameters for the type of building that you want, whether it's a mixed-use building or whether it's all housing. Um, and you also, uh, you, you need to find a location for, for this overlay district. It can, you can have multiple overlay districts. I think Northampton has at least two, if not more. Um, Belmont has one very small one, and it only has 18 units, but it's, it's a start, and we don't know if they're gonna go any further with it. But um, in any event, uh, there are um, places that are being considered for a 40R development. And I've given you each a map showing uh, three potential places. Um, so after a presentation by our consultants, Karen Sonnenberg and David Eisen, um, we gathered in small groups and looked at places in town that might be suitable for uh, creating a 40R district. Um, some of the criteria that would be used are that the district is already a mixed-use neighborhood, that it has public transportation and public infrastructure, that it's big enough to make this reasonable, um, that apartments are uh, by special permit if not by site plan review, um, that there's already a build-out capacity for the site, there are some outdoor amenities, that the uh, owner of the property is patient and isn't eager to sell immediately, um, and then there are some other uh, criteria as well. So um, the three places that were proposed by the consultants in consultation with staff were town center, and it was actually a pretty big area of town center. You can see that in the middle of the map that you have in front of you. Um, North Amherst, and again, it's a pretty big area that uh, would have this overlaid zoning district on it. And the Pomeroy Village area, which is Pomeroy Lane, West Pomeroy Lane, and Route 116 or West Street going through South Amherst. All of those three areas have, are, are already developed. They already have uh, access to um, infrastructure and utilities. They have transportation. Um, the, the, some of them have a lot of open space, would, which wouldn't necessarily be developed. But um, these are overlay districts. They sit over the existing zoning, so you don't lose your ability to develop property based on existing zoning. It just gives you an opportunity to do a different type of development that might be more suited to the town. So um, we had a great discussion. Um, many more places were, well, actually not many more, but several more places were suggested. One was University Drive, one was the Atkins Corner area, and one was East Amherst in the vicinity of the Florence Savings Bank on College Street. So those are all under consideration. Those are actually um, places that the town staff had talked to the consultant about earlier. Um, so people uh, came up with reasons why any of these places would be good places and why they wouldn't be and ranked them and it was a very lively discussion, and um, Ms. Gray Mullen and Mr. Burt Whistle were already all, also there, so they may have um, their own point of view to share with you, but I thought it was a really good start, and the next time we look at this, we're really gonna be zeroing in on which area do we actually want to designate as a 40-yard district, and then starting to talk about um, design guidelines and form-based code. Thanks so much for that, Chris. Is there a next meeting scheduled or tentatively scheduled as to when that could happen? 
There's no next meeting uh, scheduled. We're going to have to we uh, wrestle with summer in Amherst and the fact that people tend to go away and um, how much time will it take the con consultants to get their work together. So um, I think the idea is the next thing we're going to do is meet with them. Staff is going to meet with them or have a phone call with them and kind of talk about what our next steps and where do we go from here. But we'll keep you updated about when the next meeting will be. Great. Thank you. Was anyone who was there like to like to comment? All right. Thanks so much. So next item is uh, eight, any form A and R subdivision applications? No A and Rs. Nope. Okay. Upcoming ZBA applications. <coughs> Ms. Field Sadler is going to report on that. Yes, please. I will. I want to let you know that the herbology group went in front of the CBA earlier this evening, uh, and they were requesting two special permits, one for recreational marijuana and one as an off-site medical marijuana dispensary. Uh, and both of those special permits were approved. And um, on June 13th, Echo Hill Townhouse Condominium Trust is going to go before the ZBA requesting a de minimis determination for a change to condition five of their special permit uh, in their hopes to improve sidewalks and lighting in the area of Bedford and Chadwick Courts. And the other new one is It will go June 13th, um, and that is, there is, I'm just trying to see the, oh, 1530 Southeast Street, um, there is an existing non-conforming lot that they are proposing to allow a single family home on. The dimensions are okay and meet the requirements of the bylaw except for the building all right, thank you. Are there upcoming SPP, SPR, SUB applications? I think I've told you about some of these already. Um, the town dog park has already been submitted by the town, and uh, that's going to be a very exciting place when it gets um, built over on Belcher Town Road. Um, and then we have Amir McChee, who's still interested in proposing a mixed-use building on Southeast Street. He's very close to submitting his application, so I'm expecting that at any time. And we have Amherst Media coming back on um, July 17th. Great. If I could ask, I was reminded by Amir Mikshi's project about the status of that uh, tree hearing. Chris? So um, it's still a little unclear what's going to happen. Um, the town manager, I believe, is wrestling with whether he or town council should um, take on that decision making. Um, and it's. I think that the recommendation that we've received from uh, the town attorney leans towards town council, um, but that hasn't been completely decided yet. So wait and see. All right. Thanks again. Planning Board Committee and Liaison Reports. PVPC? Jack? Um, there is nothing to report except for the annual meeting uh, next week, next Thursday. What's the time of that? Five. It's starts. Five. Five to eight thirty. Yes. Okay. I think we, as a board, received an invitation to that. So I'm gonna. Did you get to your it. invitation? Mr. I received an invitation. I think I was the only one. It was addressed yes. to the chair of the planning right. board. And we yes. discussed it last time, but the time was not noted on the invitation. So five p.m. next Thursday, the thirteenth, and it's at the. Street. Oh, the Arts the Trust. Art, yes. Yeah. New building. Excellent. All right. Uh, CPAC. Uh, no report. Ag Commission. No All right. Design Review Board. Uh, Design Review Board has not met since the previous uh, Planning Board meeting. Same is true for the Affordable Housing Trust. Zoning Subcommittee we've already discussed. And Downtown Parking Working Group has not met. All right. No report of chair. Any report of staff? No report of staff. Thank you. All right. Then we're adjourned. Thanks, everyone.
we, we could talk about the schedule. Um, it appears that we, we wanted to get a handle on when people were available. So um, July 17th, it looks like, oh, excuse me. Ms. Riahi just said she wouldn't be there on July 17th, so we're going to cross her name off. This is a very useful thing. And I got excited. Greg, are you still here through the summer? I was asked to complete my availability, and I did so. Okay. So that would affect the number of So I need to find out from town council whether um, Greg can keep sitting on Amherst Media. I'm hoping he can. Um, because in the past, it's always been true that if you're on a case, you can continue till the end of the case. So without him, that would be a difficult case to manage. And um, yeah, I think we're, what we're going to find is that having seven members is going to be a challenge. It's going to be difficult to main, maintain our quorums. So, um, <coughs> but we're going to do our best, and this is a start to try to get, you know, some sense of when people are going to be here or not. So. Um, Ms. Riahi just told me she's not going to be here on the 17th, so that means we only have one, two, three, four members. And if Mr. Stutzman can sit, then we have five members to sit on Amherst Media. And the way the current voting requirement is, all five of you would have to vote yes to approve that project. So. You want to talk about any other dates here? I'm thinking maybe you won't hold a meeting on Wednesday, August 21st, because it looks like not many people are going to be here. And I'm not sure if you're going to have any business to take care of on Wednesday, July 3rd. So that may be a date that you could cancel. But in the meantime, you don't have to decide that tonight. We, you can decide that later. That is true, yes. Mm. You want to change that? July 3rd. Emerson Media has to be on the 17th, because that's when they were continued to. So. Ah. Six on July third. Keeping Greg on and not even if Greg is there or not, whether he's there or not. Sorry, you're saying the public hearing for the, um, no, Amherst Media is the 17th. It's got to be the 17th because you continued it to the 17th. So the thing that could move to the third would be zoning if you chose to do that. So is that what you'd like to do? Yes? Okay. Okay. 